Good morning from Melbourne Southern Cross Station. Along with Flinders Street Station, Southern Cross is one of the busiest stations in Melbourne, where most regional trains leave from. Which is why I'm here, because today I'm taking the train to Sydney. I arrive at Platform 1 just in time to see our train turn up. If you've seen my overnight sleeper train video, you might realise it's the same train, which is a diesel powered XBT operated by New South Wales Trainlink. Despite the train's early arrival, the crew were not able to unlock the doors. So this meant we didn't board until a few minutes before departure. Impressively though, this didn't affect our departure time. We first make our way west towards Sunshine before turning north and over the Mary Benong River Viaduct, where we arrive at the outer Melbourne suburb of Broad Meadows. Our journey today takes us northeast through both the Victorian and New South Wales countryside, making 18 stops along the way and the journey taking just over 11 hours. My economy class seat cost me $93.79. Our first stop out of Melbourne was a historic railway township of Seymour, located in the southern end of the Goulburn Valley. a cold water fountain and a bin in the vestibule area, as well as luggage space at both ends of the car. The seats are in a 2-2 configuration, with a luggage rack for smaller bags above the seats. The seats are well padded, and as well as an armrest, they're also able to recline. There's a decent amount of leg room and also a footstool. This doesn't lock down so it needs to be held down to use. Above the seat you'll find an air vent and a light. You're also supplied with a bin liner to store your rubbish. There aren't any power outlets or Wi-Fi on board. So I'd recommend taking a battery pack and downloading some movies to keep you entertained as the phone network is also out of service for quite a bit.
Before we know it, we're crossing the Murray River, which is also the state border, heading over the Spirit of Progress Bridge and into New South Wales. Our first stop in the state is the border town of Aubrey. This is also the first or last stop for feline services to or from Melbourne. Once in the New South Wales, we pass quite a lot of small towns. One thing you'll notice are the silos, a sign of the large agricultural industries in the area. You'll also notice most are built up along the train lines, with the railway playing a major role in the transport of grain. There's also a cafe bar on board, selling sandwiches and snacks. There's also hot meals available, but if you've seen my videos before, you know I don't have anything nice to say about this. Next up is Wagga Wagga, a city so good it's named twice. We make our way across the southwest slopes to Kutamundra. Most major stations are connected to further destinations, with buses waiting for the train to arrive to take people to destinations further afield. Some stations seem in the middle of nowhere. Yass Junction, serving Yass, is actually nowhere near the town centre. And Gunning Station is one of the best examples of a small, late Victorian country station, with elements from the opening of the line in 1875 still visible. On the way into Goulburn, you will notice the roundhouse of the Goulburn Rail Heritage Centre, a heritage-listed former railway workshop and now museum, where you'll also see restorations in progress as well as a working turntable. As the sun begins to set, what better time to take a look at the dunny? It has a decent amount of space and all the amenities you would expect in a toilet, including a baby change table. I can't, however, figure out how to turn the water on. If you know how to work these, can you let me know in the comments? Because really, I have no idea. The sun sets just as we make our way through Moss Vale and into our second last stop, which is also our first Sydney stop, Campbelltown. As we 
we make our way into Central, it's a good time to reflect on today's journey. Now I do think this service is slow and outdated. If it was quicker, had Wi-Fi and power, I would take this every time. But unless you're heading somewhere on the way, it just doesn't seem worth it. However, taking the train is a good way to see the different landscapes Australia has to offer, from the comfort of your seat, which is great if you're not in any rush. And it does have a different experience than flying. Having been on time the entire trip, we arrived at Central 20 minutes behind schedule. I believe due to congestion into Sydney. Do hope you enjoyed today's video. Please remember to like and subscribe. It means a lot. Thanks for watching. Thank you.